Scanning. Scanning. Welcome to Commodus 27-C. I will safely assume you are responding to the distress signals sent out from the colony. I regret to inform you that you are the only one to respond to this distress signal. It seems that something has happened in the mines below the base. Something was awoken. It has caused all of the colonists to become violent. Hyper-violent. We hope that you enjoy your stay. Hyper-violent. Hyperviolent is a new first-person shooter game early release inspired by retro sprite-based 3D games from the 90s. Though it may look something similar to Doom or Hexen or even Star Wars Dark Forces, it doesn't play like any of them. In fact, the gameplay structure reminded me more of System Shock than anything else. Which, a System Shock-based game in 3D sprites sounds like a match made in heaven, right? Right? On the mining colony of Commodus 27-C, Something was woken up from its long slumber by a power-hungry overseer. You, the nameless main character, respond to the distress call after boarding the... colony? Ship? It's never really explained, but the game starts with you leaving your ship. Not long after that, you find your first weapon that you equip in your hand, depending on whether you are a righty or a lefty. You discover the first of many casualties with the word HELP written in blood behind him. You take the pistol from his corpse, and walk away when suddenly the corpse jumps up and tries to attack you, all while screaming like a banshee. Jarring and intriguing for sure. The majority of the game is told through visual clues and email context and exposition. The game is currently on early access, so there's only a small handful of levels to play through. Towards the end, you meet the overseer who caused this outbreak to occur. He then flees into the sewers with you chasing him. This is where the early access ends, and I will wholeheartedly admit it was the story that kept me pushing through, as I was so interested in seeing what was causing all this carnage and mayhem. There are certain beats that reminded me of Red Faction in a weird way. The Overseer becomes infected and flies around shooting energy balls at you, much like Kapek, while the source of this power was discovered in the mines below. While the story is interesting and well told with some half-decent voice acting, the gameplay itself was not the standout component of this game, which, being a first-person shooter, is not a very good sign. Allow me to explain. The game is difficult, but that doesn't make it bad. It's somewhat your standard affair run and gun first person shooter, or so it makes itself seem. Fulcrum Publishing had posted on their Twitter, Hyper Violent, a brutal fast paced old school FPS. And this could not be further from the truth. Hyper Violent will punish you if you treat it like a run and gun. The game is made to be more like a survival horror type first person shooter where you have to scavenge for supplies and save your ammo for more difficult enemies. So in order to save ammo, you can use melee weapons, except it's not preferred against enemies with guns. The second enemy you encounter has an LMG, or light machine gun, and can shoot you with pinpoint accuracy that can drain your health in a matter of seconds. The best way to avoid taking damage from these enemies are by shooting them in the head. Now, Every enemy is sprite based, right? So trying to distinguish where on this enemy to shoot to get a headshot is pretty difficult. What makes it more difficult is the fact that your weapons have ridiculous amounts of spread. So even if you are aiming your reticle right in an enemy's head, you better hope that your shot is anywhere close to the reticle, which most of the times, it's not. Now weapons have both a damage and accuracy stat, but if you're supposed to go for headshots for an instant kill, the damage stat is pretty much irrelevant. The accuracy stat was either a lie or completely broken. The beginning pistol was the weapon I used for the entire game. 
Even though you find a pistol with a higher damage and accuracy stat later, it performed worse than the starting pistol. So even if you have high accuracy stats, it doesn't mean anything. What makes it even more difficult on top of that is when an enemy shoots you, your camera flies all over the place, and you get this obnoxious amount of red on your screen. And as I said before, since they're using a machine gun, it's consistent. There were times that I was killed immediately as I opened a door, all because of these specific enemies. The funny thing is, the more difficult enemies you face later on aren't as difficult or cheap as these fuckers. If they have guns, they still need to get pretty close before they can begin shooting. Oh, and did I mention their hit-scanning enemies? Yep. Like the good old chain gunners, this one enemy alone makes the game unable to be played as a run and gun. Instead, these enemies make you play hyper-violent like you're playing Wolfenstein, peeking around every corner, opening doors from the side so you're not immediately targeted, inching every single step to make progress, and the game doesn't have any kind of quick save. You have to make it to designated save stations. These enemies are almost the bane of this entire game, and they're the second enemy you encounter. Imagine for a moment that you're playing Super Mario Bros. on the NES, or I guess at this point many people would play it on the Switch NES Essentials. Everyone is familiar with the Goombas. Very easy enemies, just jump over them or stomp on them to kill them. Not a huge threat, but not pointless either. The second enemy you encounter is the Koopa. A little different, slightly more difficult with their bouncing shells, but nothing too crazy. Now, imagine if the second enemy you encountered was a Hammer Brother, and replace every Koopa with a Hammer Brother. That's what the difficulty of this enemy is like. I know it sounds like I'm just shitting on the game, but that's really the only negative to this game. As blaring as it is, it doesn't ruin the overall game. The other enemies, as I mentioned earlier, are well balanced, very unique, and fun. A wonderful function in this game is the ability to dual wield. You can dual wield any combination you want, as long as it's a single-handed weapon. Pipe and flashlight, laser blaster and machine gun, stun baton and electric sword, or even dismembered arms. The shotgun, heavy machine gun, and laser rifle all need two hands, which makes them pretty impossible to use in the dark. It would be nice to have some kind of upgrade to attach to these items, which would give you a mounted flashlight, giving more versatility to these weapons in dark areas. And this game can get pretty dark. The gamma option does not help a single bit. Speaking of weapon upgrades... Upgrade. There are 9,726 listings for upgrade. You do find weapon components scattered around the base, encouraging exploration and secret hunting, which can improve the overall damage, magazine size, and accuracy. Personally, the worst weapon in the game were the machine guns. The spread was way too inaccurate, and overall damage output was abysmal. In a game that encourages ammo conservation instead of consumption, it's not the best. If they had their own ammo, it would be a different story, but they share the same ammo as your pistols. I played the game on normal difficulty, which would only give me about 5 rounds per ammo pickup. On easy, you get 30 per box. So if you want to do a run and gun, then play on easy. If you want a survival horror game, play on normal or higher. Speaking of survival horror, there is an inventory management system which is somewhat broken for one specific reason. When certain enemies die, gun wielding enemies, they have a chance to drop either ammo or the weapon itself. Collecting the weapon does not add any ammo to your count. Instead, you just have another of that same weapon. The downfall is, you cannot remove the ammo from the magazines to add it to your count. You would think, oh, then I'll just equip this weapon, use the remaining ammo, and discard when I'm done. Two things stop this from working. One, majority of the dropped weapons are light machine guns the weakest, most inaccurate gun, and trying to use the remaining 5 rounds on an enemy is almost suicide, as it takes more than 5 rounds to kill them, since the accuracy is so bad you can't pull off a headshot. 2. If you accidentally fire when the magazine is empty, you will reload the gun. 32 rounds, the same rounds you need to share with your pistols, with no way to retrieve them. Please, Fulcrum Publishing, please add a way to empty the magazine slash gun so you can add it to your overall count. This feature alone will both be realistic and rewarding to the player. Laser blasters can have the same outcome, but the laser blaster weapons don't use magazines or clips. Instead, they fire directly from your source of energy ammo, so you never need to worry about reloading. 
In fact, I found the best way to combat the difficult enemies in this game is to dual wield the laser pistols. They're fast firing, accurate, and do a hefty amount of damage. Only downside is the lack of ammo. Same deal with shotguns. It doesn't take any kind of clip or magazine, so you don't need to worry about retrieving ammo. My two biggest gripes for this game, and it's all centered around the same enemy. <laughs> Alright, now let's talk about what I loved about this game. As I mentioned before, the game feels and looks like something out of System Shock, just pixelated, and I adore that. The settings and variety of locations were fresh and intriguing to explore through, even the sewers towards the end of the early access gameplay. Now, normally sewers are a bane in any game, but in Hyperviolent, the sewers are littered with creatures and mounds of corpses and viscera. Other locations include a bar slash club, a greenhouse, the medical ward, etc. Fulcrum put some fantastic details into the sprites, most particularly the deceased inhabitants of this mining colony. Each pixelated corpse is unique, and I don't think I saw any of these sprites being reused. Not only are they all unique, instead of the sprites just rotating to always view the player, these sprites have different angles. I love the dedication and detail put into this. As I mentioned before, the visual clues set context for the player to discover and elaborate on themselves. The horror and the gore also seems inspired by classic sci-fi horror films such as Event Horizon, and even non-sci-fi horror films such as... You recognize it? I recognize it right away and loved the homage. The enemy designs are pretty fun as well, with each one looking completely different than the last. The jibs are very satisfying as well, especially when you're gunning down the hallways with a shotgun. If you are going to play this game, the first thing I encourage you to do is to go into the options, turn the sway down either partially or all the way, then adjust the FOV. I had mine set to 80, and not only does it make your movement speed feel normal and not like you're sledging through tar, it also helps tremendously with your accuracy. Even though the trailer shows it as a fast-paced heavy metal action game, Hyperviolent doesn't go the heavy metal fast-paced action shooting mayhem route. Instead, it settles on a more subtle sci-fi horror ambiance, and it fits extremely well. Each creature has their own distinct sounds as well, but even still, there aren't any different tactics to taking them down. It boils down to, if the enemy has a melee weapon, melee them. If they have guns, gun them. And finally, the voice acting. They're half decent, but the Overseer's voice actor just sounds like he's phoning in his lines. I get it if you want your villain to sound menacing, but you can't do a menacing voice yourself. So all you have to do is say the line somewhat quickly, then in editing, lower your voice by about an octave or two, then slow the audio speed down to give it that more menacing quality. And before anybody says, you can't do that, that's cheating, that's not real voice acting, Robert Englund did the exact same method for Freddy Krueger. And so I began to do the Freddy voice faster. And then when they applied the very speed technique in post-production, it would come out normal. So if I said, uh, welcome to prime time, bitch, <laughs> it would come out on the feature film, welcome to prime time, bitch, <laughs> it would slow down naturally with just that hint that just that taste of very speed on it so that's sort of all you'll ever want to know about the freddy voice i imagine welcome to my world bitch for an early release hyperviolent is an incredibly fun game but bogged down by two major glaring issues with some slight adjustments this game could be a classic retro survival horror game but as it stands right now it feels a little too early to even be close to released now Fulcrum Publishings have made some good games in the past, most notable, Ion Fury. So I know they've got the talent for this, and I'm eagerly awaiting the rest of Hyperviolent. We hope that you enjoy your stay. Hyperviolent.